the first 50 subscribers that I see go into my comments and type, I just subscribe, I will be screenshotting and putting you guys' names in a musical visualizer, something that's never been done before. I ask you guys, please take time to listen to my music. Let me know how you feel. But more importantly, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you. Kiki Benny. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Little Mighty, aka the Global Dog Skinny Ambassador. I think today I want to speak on my top five reasons for moving out of New York City and why I moved to the South. More importantly, more directly, South Carolina. Even though South Carolina is just a stepping stone in the ultimate plan, which was to own and maintain land in the South and do like my grandfather did, which was have a big, big, big ownership of a large piece of land and give to my children and my loved ones to pass down and keep in the family. But I got my top five reasons and I'm gonna give them to you right now. Number five, New York City is very gentrified now and expensive. Um, before my mother moved into a nice big house here in South Carolina, um, she used to live in 161st Street, the Browns, in the Bronx. She had a two bedroom and she paid fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars a month. Um, for less than that, she's maintaining a three bedroom house, uh, one bathroom, but bigger living room, bigger kitchen, uh, front yard, backyard, shed, driveway, all of these things for either the same amount she was paying in the Bronx or for less. Um, she's way more satisfied than she was and she definitely likes her living quarters better than she did when we were in the Bronx where she has her own space, don't gotta step out her doorstep and two feet later, a whole nother family got a whole nother set of problems or a bed bug problem that's possibly coming into our apartment. So. Being that they raising the prices on everything and I realized that if I want to have a real nice car and a real nice place that I could pay for without having to rely on a woman to pay bills with me because that's never the plan. It should never be in a man's plan to share any kind of bills with a woman. It's either you in my house, I'm paying everything so I could do what I want and you can leave if you don't like it, or I'd rather be homeless uh, in my mother's house. You know what I'm saying? But um, that's the fifth reason why I moved to South Carolina, but more importantly, the South. Okay, reason number four. I've been wanting to move to the South as an end goal like I stated before, um, situations in life just gave me an earlier uh, exit routine that I chose to take advantage of. And one of those um, earlier exit routines is gonna be towards getting to number one. But um, yeah, I mean, I've been wanting to move. I mean, I came home from prison in 2010. And from that moment on, I when I came down to South Carolina to visit folk or go to a funeral or a family reunion or something. It's just a whole different vibe. It's like, I feel more in tune to the land. I'm gonna say South Carolina for now, but the South, like I just feel more in tune with the land. I mean, um, I like looking up in the sky and seeing natural light stars trying to spot the Big Dipper in the sky. Um, um, I don't mind occasionally seeing a deer running past me or running past a car, as long as it don't hit us and fuck the car up. Um, it's something about the South that just makes me feel more at ease. It just feels more at home, you know? Um, 
So ultimately the plan was to come to South Carolina, be in South Carolina two, three years. Um, I'm approaching two years right now, but by third year, I'm definitely gonna move to at least a more populated area of South Carolina, or I'll probably move to Georgia or something like that. But um, that always was the plan, you know, do that, get a whole bunch of land, do like my grandfather did, give it to my children. Um, but the number three reason, me needing to be closer to my mom and my stepdad in case of emergency. Um, for those of you who've been watching a lot of my earlier videos, um, my mother and my stepfather used to be heavily addicted to alcohol. Um, my mother still had a sip here and there. Um, it doesn't get too out of control. Um, my stepfather doesn't drink at all. But, um, you know, they're getting older in age. They have the occasional health problem. Like, um, my stepfather should be coming home from dealing with gal stones and the gal bladder today, um, stuff like that. And I felt like with them being in South Carolina and me being in New York, if there's an emergency, the quickest way I could get to them would be in someone's car, which is nine hours. Um, if I take a bus, it could be 12 hours or more. Um, currently right now, they are a 10 minute walk away from me. Um, if there's an emergency, I can easily get to them. I could be the first person over there. You know, um, everyone else who cares about uh, my mother and my stepfather just as much as me, there's probably one or two more people in this whole area and everyone else would be in New York. So it was very essential for me to be very close to my mom at this current point in her life. And because I feel like we need to take more care of our older people. We need to be as close to them as we can. You know what I'm saying? Um, just like if I came across a million dollars today and I moved to Zamunda or Wakanda, you know, I'm gonna have my mother with me. Like no matter what's going on with me, I feel like I need to not live with my mother because she's very difficult to live with and she have her own set of rules, but I need to be close. I need to be able to touch her and get in arm's reach of her and my stepfather as easily as possible. Uh, but moving on to number two, I feel like the South is a better place to raise a child. There's more things for a child to do than in the rough and tough gritty, cold, mean streets of New York City. Um, down here in the South, there's a lot more opportunities for uh, especially a young black boy to learn different vocations, um, to learn carpentry. There's more time and space available and open space available. Um, for sports, there's more time and open space available. Um, for things like learning how to mow grass, work on cars, work on uh, electricity. A lot of these things can be do in New York, but it's easier to focus and have less distractions when you're in the South in a less populated place. Um, me getting older and coming to the South, I understood that it's definitely a better surrounding, in my opinion, to raise a child if you want to have a choice and you have the choice with the best possible resources. I feel like I always want to raise children in the South now, and I had that opportunity. That opportunity was taken away from me, um, bullshittingly, but legally. But yeah, that's number two. And number one, on a very serious term, which will include me admitting my demons and my struggles in life, which is number one thing is I needed to break the unhealthy attachment from my baby mom once and for all. Um, any negativity I say about my baby mom, I'm only always gonna give her 50% of that negativity because I feel like as a man, we ultimately logically get ourselves into situations that we're not supposed to be in. And for almost an entire decade, and basically the large first half of my 20s, I spent a lot of time having an unhealthy attachment to my baby mom. And what I would describe now is 
not love, but a physical attachment and, and a comfortability, a comfortability of having um, a certain level of attachment to this person. And you basically, not all the time, but you know basically what you're going to get with that person. It's like, um, it's like an endorphin type of thing. Like you're used to feeling this type of way at this time. And I just got used to a habit and a trend of being mad at this girl, cutting this girl off. And with her letting me come back and hit whenever I wanted to, never really turning me down, never really leaving me, but allowing me to leave and come back all the time. I just developed an unhealthy habit of going through all these extremes and ultimately it wasn't making me happy. Once I really realized that me dealing with this girl will never ultimately leave me happy, I decided to truly part ways. And when an incident happened that allowed me the opportunity to distance myself from this girl and at the same time, because it just so happened that my son was going to visit my mom down there for the summer, I took that opportunity to say, you know what? I'm going to end it all right now. I'm going to pay this $200. I'm going to pack my shit and I'm going to South Carolina and I'm starting something new. New chapter in my life. Um, She took it hard. She's still taking it hard. Um, That's partly why um, her feeling that rejection is not allowing her to let me logically speak to my son and see his face when I want to. Um, but I realized that the hardest part is already over. The mental war of the familiarity of coming back to somebody over and over again because of the comfortability, not because of the positivity of it, but because of the comfortability, a struggle that I feel like a lot of men and dads go through. I made it my business to distance myself from that girl, you know? So now it's no longer easy for her to pop up at my door randomly and me end up having sex with her. There is no more possibility of her popping up at my door, bringing any drama to me, my house, or my mom's house. There's only the future, and that's the direction that I'm headed. And part of that, I had to leave New York City and move to the South. Like, share, comment, subscribe. It's Nate Almighty. One.